Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and first of all happy Valentine's Day. Um, it's my one of my favorite holidays because Valentine's Day involves something special near and dear to my heart. It's called chocolate and we actually have legal chocolate here. Adele makes these amazing no-bake chocolate cookies with cherry and chocolate peanut butter and so I am going to indulge myself with a cookie today. I don't know which one I'm going to choose but I am going to indulge myself and you have my permission to indulge yourself with something too. That's what holidays are for, treat time. Okay, so a couple of other announcements. Um, Dr. Peter Bregan, our business partner and psychiatrist extraordinaire, is going to be in Columbus for four days filming videos for the new course that the state just approved for us to offer through the Institute called Why and How to Withdraw from Psychiatric Drugs. And so 25 very lucky people are going to spend the four days with Dr. Bregan and these workshops are going to be interactive. He likes to film them in front of a group. So you will have to sign a release because you'll be on tape too. But I'm going to be talking about things like depression, anxiety, attention deficit disorder, PTSD, psychosis, schizophrenia, and um, he'll be talking about the drugs, how to withdraw from the drugs, the problem with the drugs, how they alter the brain. Lots of incredible information. You will get a chance to ask questions, and the weekend in includes a uh, Friday night dinner with Dr. Bragan too. So for those of you who want to spend time with Dr. Bregan, and I recommend it highly, um, you want to make your reservation now because like I said, it's 25 very lucky people who get to do this. And then our wonderful friend Eileen Kopsaftis is going to be in Columbus for a few days to work at one of our employer sites. Um, she is going to do an evening program here. So if you're in the greater Columbus area, you definitely want to pay attention to these two events. And then last but not least, we have a special offer for those of you who are addicted to Wellness Farm Health's fabulous breakfast smoothie. Buy your smoothie supplies in a six month increment and you get to take a certification course for free. So that's it for that. Let's get into some content. I want to talk about cortisone injections, which are often used to relieve pain association, associated with things like tendonitis, injuries, overuse. And here's the thing, they really do work, um, but evidence that the shots make things worse has been largely ignored. And it goes all the way back to 1954. Researchers reported that over half of the patients who received a cortisone shot for either tennis elbow or tendon pain someplace in the body had a relapse of the injury within six months of the injection. The study didn't get much attention at that time, and there have subsequently been a whole lot more studies that have shown the same thing and sometimes even worse results, and um, nobody paying attention. They're still largely prescribed to people for pain relief. A meta-analysis of 41 studies, which included thousands of people with injuries like tennis elbow, Achilles tendon, showed that the uh, injections, again, relieved the pain, and that pain relief could actually last for up to a few weeks. Now, a few weeks, that's you know not really a very long time in the grand scheme of things, but here's the more important issue. Follow-up at six and 12 months showed that patients who had the shots had a significantly lower recovery rate than those did, that did nothing at all or had physical therapy. In other words, sometimes doing nothing is better than having a cortisone shot. The patients receiving cortisone shots, just to give you an example, had a 63% higher risk of relapse than people who just practiced watchful waiting to see if their pain would just go away on its own. For those patients who had tennis elbow, the results were even worse. While research shows that between 70 and 90% of patients who do nothing get better after 6 to 12 months, those getting cortisone shocks, shots were actually worse off with the shots interfering with recovery. And the interesting thing about this was that the dose, it was dose dependent. In other words, the more injections a person has, the less likely the person is to recover. So really what this is, is a lot of short-term gain, I mean really short-term, a few weeks in return for long-term major problems. Um, now one question is, how do the cortisone shots actually make things worse? Well, the answer lies in the types of injuries for which they're used, which often involve some inflammation and almost always are related to things like poor posture, misuse of joints, misalignment. Those, all, those are things that all contribute to the degeneration of joints, tendons, and ligaments. The reason why the cortisone shots will work in the short term is that they have a temporary effect on the neuroreceptors that cause the pain. But injections, while they appeal to a lot of people for two reasons, instant relief and also because there's no work involved. You don't really have to do anything that it takes effort. Um, so that's why they're appealing. They don't address the underlying problems, which I mentioned earlier, and in fact can interfere with the resolution of the issue. 
They inhibit the inflammatory response, which then accelerates the degenerative process in affected tendons and ligaments and joints. And then relief from pain causes people to think they've been cured. And then whatever misalignment or problem is going on, people continue to move around thinking everything's fine because they're not feeling any pain and they often make the injury or whatever it is that they're dealing with considerably worse. Stopping the misuse can reduce pain, at least temporarily, and that's unfortunately what people do. They just stop moving, and they're often instructed to do that by well-meaning doctors who say, well, if you don't move around, you won't aggravate it, it'll heal up, and then you can move later. But the better option is the right type of exercise and physical therapy, which can restore function and actually correct the problem. So here's the bottom line. A lot of the pain that people experience every day is caused by muscles that are overused or they're not being used properly, which causes them to shorten in response. And this shortening of the muscles then causes joints to track incorrectly, and that leads to more dysfunction and then more pain. So the key is you have to fix that. The way you fix that is the right exercise and physical therapy. Deep tissue massage can also help. These things elongate those muscles again, which can then lead to restored and correct function of the joints and permanent drug-free relief from pain. And that is the much better option. You know, I've always said if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is too good to be true. So when somebody says, all you have to do is let us give you this shot and your problems are solved, that's a pretty simplistic approach to a problem that's a little more complicated in the making. It is it sounds too good to be true, and it actually is too good to be true. All right, so next topic is one I talk about all the time, and the reason why we have to talk about it all the time is this vitamin D issue has gotten completely out of hand. I'm going to come back to that, but let's just start by saying reductionism is pervasive and looking at almost all aspects of health. For example, we talk about vitamins and protein instead of the right foods we should eat. We prescribe drugs to treat symptoms rather than focusing on the health of the whole person and the cause of the problem. Health professionals and researchers are always trying to take humans, their diets, their lifestyle habits, and their very complicated interrelationship with the environment and distill it all down into simple things. And this is what's happened with vitamin D. And what I mean by that is if you take a look at the types of things that people are prescribing vitamin D for, um, for joint pain, for bone health, for immune function, for cancer prevention, glucose regulation, there is absolutely no way that vitamin D can influence all of those things. And in fact, it doesn't according to the evidence. But, but it almost sounds like the stuff is magic dust that you just take the stuff and all your problems will be gone and all of your future problems will be prevented. So anyway, that brings me to the discussion of sunlight. Humans have spent time in the sun since the beginning of life on the planet. In spite of this, people have been trained to think that any and all sunlight is a bad idea. I mean, I, I, I jokingly say, but only half joking, people are putting on sunblocks so they can go get their mail every day. It's ridiculous. Um, and so what they're told is that sunlight exposure is dangerous and that the real benefit of sunlight is vitamin D. And gosh, you can take that and supplement pills and an increasing number of fortified foods. So therefore, you don't have to spend time in the sun and then you won't burn. Problem solved. You can sit inside, take pills, and you get all the benefits of sunlight. Well, if only that were true, but it is the typical reductionist approach. Um, sunlight has a positive effect on health via a whole lot of different mechanisms that don't have anything to do with vitamin D. Now let's just start with sun and sunlight being much more complicated than most people know. Uh, sunlight is comprised of several colored light rays that together create sunlight. These include red, orange, yellow, green, and blue rays and many different shades in between. Rays also differ in length with longer rays having less energy than the shorter rays which have more energy. Blue rays are shorter, they have more energy, and they've been shown to have many benefits, which include improving alertness and cognitive function and positively affecting mood. Light therapy, which is often used to treat seasonal affective disorder, utilizes white light that contains significant amounts of blue light. This is just one example of the many ways in which sunlight affects health that really don't have much to do with vitamin D or vitamin D production. Studies have also shown that sunlight can have a positive effect on several disease conditions. For example, in one study, 264 patients who had multiple sclerosis and 69 healthy controls agreed to uh, participate in this research study where all kinds of things were evaluated. Um, 
Uh, things like race, skin and eye color, supplement use, BMI, sun exposure, vitamin D levels, all kinds of things evaluated. The MS patients who are included in the study have been sick for an average of 14.6 years. Um, increased sun exposure was associated with less neurodegeneration in multiple sclerosis patients, and it had nothing to do with their vitamin D levels. More sun exposure uh, resulted in increased gray matter volume and whole brain volume. The researchers concluded that sun exposure might have effects on multiple sclerosis patients that go beyond the production of vitamin D, which means that vitamin D is not a substitute for spending time in the sun if you're a multiple sclerosis patient who wants to improve your lot in life. Another study showed that blue light improves immune function in both humans and mice. Now this is where it gets really interesting. Researchers looked at human and mice T lymphocytes. These are pretty important immune cells. After exposure to blue light, discovered that the light triggered the production of hydrogen peroxide, which in turn activated signaling pathways that led to increased uh, efficacy and motility of the T cells. This process takes uh, uh, place naturally in response to infection or a pathogen, but you can actually stimulate it in the absence of infection by spending time in the sun. Now, one of the reasons for the effect is that the blue light reaches the dermis, the second layer of the skin, which contains a really high concentration of T cells. It's referred, sometimes, referred to sometimes as the dermal immune system. Um, the rich concentration of lymphocytes located in the dermis can enter the bloodstream and then travel any place in the, uh, that those cells might be needed in the body. So time in the sun actually stimulates a part of your immune system with a mechanism of action which we've now been able to identify. And that doesn't happen when you take vitamin D pills. That's why so many of the studies have been an abject failure where they've given vitamin D pills to people and nothing changes from a health perspective. Now, there are some studies, I mean, everybody wants to talk about a study in Texas with second grade kids who didn't get as many colds one school year, but, but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands actually at this time of uh, studies that have shown absolutely no effect. So, the advice to take vitamin P v D pills <laughs> is ill-advised for a number of reasons, including that taking pills, as I said, not a substitute for spending time in the sun. Now, we can all agree that burning the skin should be avoided, so you have to be very careful about sun exposure, but avoiding sunlight altogether doesn't lead to better health. So, again, it's this persistent problem of reductionism. Let's see if we can find simple solutions to complicated problems, and it's particularly a great thing if you can come up with a simple solution that doesn't involve people having to do anything. So the common denominator between these two articles is a cortisone shot, no effort required, instant pain relief, much easier in the short term than going to a physical therapist, yoga, all of the things that you can do to improve things in a meaningful way. Um, taking pills and sitting on the couch, much easier than getting your body out in the sun, being careful about sun exposure, making sure that your skin turns in the summertime and all that sort of thing. So um, the simple solution, the easy way out, usually isn't very simple and it usually doesn't end up in the long term being the easy way out either. All right, well, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.